When you're making first serves, what is the issue? When I try to hit the ball harder, it's either in the net or it's out. So net and out. So yeah. control is a problem. Yeah. Okay, what about power? You feel like you're getting some good heat on there? On the flat on the no, first serve? No. Like I can have the potential to hit harder, but I don't do it because I okay. it goes out. You're lacking a fundamental aspect of the serve and that's forward momentum. And the way you get forward momentum on the serve is super simple. You basically have to throw the ball inside the baseline, okay? So basically somewhere around here, if you let the ball drop, it would be somewhere around here. That's where you need to toss it. Okay. Now, when the ball is in front of the baseline, you're simply going to lean forward. You're gonna lean your body a little bit forward. So go ahead and get in that trophy position. All right, that's not trophy. You don't have to I lean know. back. You don't have to lean back, just hold it here. And okay. right, I'm gonna hold your racket. Now I want you actually to get on your toes, get on your toes, bend your knees, and lean forward, lean forward, I'll hold you. Lean forward, more. There you go, I'm holding you. Okay. Keep going, no, don't, oh, oh, okay. keep going forward. You see, now if I let go, keep going, lean forward. Now if I let go, I you're gonna fall forward. Now get both feet on the ground. Both feet on the ground, lean forward. Okay. I'm gonna hold you, and I'm gonna let go. Keep leaning forward. Okay. You see how you kind of like just fall into the court? Yeah. That is exactly what happens on the serve. It's going to be there for like a millisecond, that right? That feeling of leaning, because you can't hold that position for very long. It's going to be inside your service motion where you're leaning and you're going to transfer all your body weight into the contact and you get this effortless power. Okay. And all you got to do is throw the ball in front and then lean forward. Get on your toes, bend your knees and lean your body forward just like you did here when I was holding your racket. Okay. Lean. Even more, exaggerate a little bit. Throw exactly. it a little bit more in front. Yeah, exaggerate. So kind of chasing the ball a little bit. And I don't really like that term because it kind of has a negative connotation, chasing the ball. Right. It's going to be perfectly synced into your service motion. But all you have to do is you have to lean in. So a lot of players will throw the ball in front, they don't lean in. They end up with a jackknife serve. So if I throw it in front and I don't lean, I end up serving like this. So the body has to lean forward correlated to the ball that's in front of the baseline. So you go in front here, body leans forward and all the body weight goes into the ball. Okay. And you don't have to worry about the timing because you already have the timing. You have a good service motion, you have a good rhythm. So this uh, fix is super simple. More Shamir, it's not enough. Yeah. More, and throw it a little bit higher. Okay. Best one you hit so far. You hear that, that sound? There yeah, was a little... I thought that was a shank though, I wasn't sure. No, not at all, oh, okay. man. Not at all. We see actually the contact on the serve is gonna be a little bit higher on the string bed. Yeah. It's gonna if you hit the serve right with a little higher toss, you're actually gonna make contact above the center of the racket. That is the contact on the serve. Okay. So yeah? for the first serve, twelve o'clock or one o'clock is okay? Absolutely. Into the court. All right. Into the court and lean on it. More. That's not enough. I'm, not, I'm, I'm hesitating. Right? Do it again. Yes. I'm not you're enough. not. Well, first of all, you're not throwing it far enough into the court, and then you can't really lean on the ball. So what, hold on one sec. So if you try to lean, but the ball gets behind you, now you have even a worse problem because now if I lean forward, but the toss is behind, now I'm going to make contact behind my head, and I'm going to get much less power. Right. And possibly going to hurt my shoulder. Okay. So, so this is the complexity of the serve. Everything has to be synced together. Okay. You have to throw it in front, but you also have to lean forward. Am I tossing before I'm leaning? Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. You can't lean. This is the rhythm of the serve. I'll show you. And you don't really have to think about this because you're already doing it correctly. Okay. But I'll show you anyway. Your weight's going to be on the front foot, okay? And now you're going to transfer the weight on the back foot. And now you're going to toss the ball and transfer the weight onto the front foot. But the leaning doesn't come yet. It comes much later in the service motion. Okay. Okay, so slide over a little bit more. When the racket gets close to the acceleration phase, the unloading phase, which happens when the racket drops, yeah. that's when you should be leaning. Right before the... Before yeah, the because you got to remember in the context of the serve, the timing between the racket drop and the contact is so short. And that's where the leaning occurs. Right before that loop. It, it's right before that looping yeah, action, exactly. And then... Yeah, because like I told you before, you can't hold that lean very long, mm -hmm. but you gotta remember that from the racket drop into the contact, it doesn't take very long. So it usually sinks perfectly together. Let me show you one more time. So you go forward, you go back like this, and now, do you see it? Yeah. I, I, and, yeah, I and I get all that momentum transferred into the ball, all that body weight. You get so much effortless power that way. Better.
And I think it's making a, a different sound to serve. You're getting a little bit more pace. Lean. Wow. Shamir, you saw that one? It, was a, it took off a little bit. That was a bomb, right? Yeah. Do it again. No, that was a bad one. I what do you like think? What did it feel like? It was too, it was too close to me. All right, so what happened there was you tried to lean, but the toss was behind you. It was like right along the baseline right there. Yeah. All right, so what ended up happening is that the contact was too far behind. Yeah. You lost tons of power. I'm so used to tossing and making... Because you're not using forward momentum. Yeah, I'm not going into it. You're not it. going, you got to start going into it. Look at the pace. Now, you got to remember that if you throw it too far in front, you're going to have a problem getting it over the net. Yeah. So you have to get a little bit more height on the toss. It's better throwing it too high than too low. There it is. Try again. You're getting there. Almost there. Best one you hit so far. Yeah, one, awesome. Made... Awesome serve. <laughs> Much better. That was it. Does that feel good? Yeah, yeah. All right, now show me a kick serve, okay? Okay. Okay, not bad. Try again. Oh, no, that was a bad one. Do it again. Okay, so you notice how your kick serve has a very low trajectory. The ball is kind of flat on the second bounce. It doesn't really bounce up. It doesn't go behind. Right, yeah. and that's because it's not really a kick serve, it's a slice serve. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the reason why it's a slice serve is because you are rotating into the contact. Oh, and so, so you gotta stay close. You gotta stay close. So here's what's, what should happen on a kick serve. It, the same thing we talked about on the first serve, you're gonna do on the kick serve as well. It's gonna be a little bit less, but you're still gonna go forward. You notice how all the pros, they're landing inside the court. Yeah. Even on the kick serve, yeah, right. And that's only because they're throwing the ball inside the court. Not as much as the first serve, a flat serve or a slice serve. Not maybe here, but they're still throwing it inside the baseline. Dominic team throws it way inside the baseline, even on the kicker. So what you're going to do is continue throwing it a little bit more to the left because that's what you're comfortable with. Yeah. You're going to hold your torso from rotating. You're going to not allow the torso to rotate into the contact. I'm going to explain in a second why. And you're going to lean on the ball just like you would on a flat serve, leaning, okay? Leaning in it closed. Leaning in into the court close. Let me show you one, okay? okay? So I'm gonna throw the ball. Cause I lose power, right, if I open up? No, actually gain power from rotating into the ball. You do gain power, but I'm gonna explain to you in a second what the problem is. But okay. first let me show you kind of the basics, what you should do. Sink into the court, but not as much as the first serve, just a little bit. You're gonna throw right. into the court, but a little bit less than the first serve, but still into the course you can lean on it. And then what that does, it gives you a little bit more forward momentum on the, on the kick serve. You get a little bit more power from that. Okay. okay, so let me show you. So I'm gonna throw it, in my case, I like throwing it like 11.30, and I'm gonna lean on it, and I'm gonna get forward momentum. There. Now here's the most important thing on the kicker, is that you have to hold the torso rotation. And what that's gonna do is gonna allow the racket to be more at an angled position. That's what's gonna create more spin. So when you make contact with the racket being like this, you get a lot more spin than if you had the racket more at a vertical position. That's like a first serve. Well, that's even a slice. So normally when you rotate, the racket kind of straightens out a little bit. It's very unlikely that the racket's gonna be like this if you rotate into the serve. It's naturally gonna straighten out a little bit. Now, another thing that makes the racket straighten out is if the toss gets more towards the right. This also makes the racket straighten out and this hurts the kick because we don't create kick that way. See, this position of the racket face and then a lateral swing path afterwards creates slice. And this position of the racket head and then a lateral swing path creates spin. So I'm going seven to one. Don't think of it with those numbers. That's very confusing. The okay. simplest way to look at it is what happens to the ball as we're approaching it. So on a kick serve, we're going to stay sideways. We're going to throw the ball to at least 12 o'clock. And as we come up to the ball, look, we're going to meet it like this, okay? And now naturally, the racket's going to go towards the right, okay? This happens for most players. Because we're sideways, it's very unlikely we're going to hit forward on the ball because the body's in the way. Naturally, the arm is just going to swing to the side. And look what happens to the ball if I swing this way. You see how the ball is spinning? It's spinning like this? That's spin. Okay. Okay, what would be true top spin? True top spin would be this, correct? The racket like this and yeah. then going up. That's true topspin. We can't get this position on the serve. Yeah, we can't. No. Right? So the yeah. best thing we have is this. And we get kind of like a three-quarter spin. Wait, is the ball turning sideways? No, the ball's turning like this. See? This is how it's turning. You see this? Yeah. 
This is top spin on the serve. Okay, this is true top spin. How do we, do so we is create it in between? Is it like in between? Three quarter. So okay. this would be true top spin. We can't get this angle of the racket face. No. All right, so we can get this angle of the racket face and we make, okay. let's call it a three quarter spin. So like how the earth is on the sphere, it's at an angle, it's like, I don't know about the earth, oh, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't the know. Earth is on a That's too complicated. Yeah, okay, okay. Whatever. Okay. You might be right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't but, know. but the slice, we meet it a little more vertical and we go to the side. Look what happens to the ball. It spins this way. So that's what I was doing earlier. So this is this is not top spin, this is slice. That's slice. You see how it's spinning? So in between that is the kicker. This is true top spin, this is slice, and this is that's kick. kick. In between the, the two. And the only way you can achieve that by is by, by staying closed and by throwing the ball to at least 12 o'clock, at least. If you throw it to one o'clock, the racket's gonna straighten out. You won't get any spin. And a little bit in the court. We're gonna continue using forward momentum. We're gonna throw it slightly into the court. Not too much, because what I find with the, with the kick serve, the, if you throw it very far in front of the court, you're gonna get a very shallow type of flight path. So the closer, oh, yeah. the closer you throw it towards the baseline, the more height you get. Easier to hit up on. Well, it's a little bit easier to get the height, because okay. the ball, if it's in front, is gonna be a lower angle. But is my swing path, like I was saying earlier, it's along the baseline? Instead no, of that's a very good question, actually, because in the reality, the swing path is not parallel to the baseline. It's not like this. It's actually still more of a forward swing path. If you look at any professional kick serve, it's not truly completely lateral. But it's, 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 it's that way, but forward. And yes, it's more diagonal. Yes, diagonal, it's, but still It's slightly long. diagonal. So if I make a completely lateral swing path like this, look. See there, I don't even think it was completely lateral. I still think I went yeah, a little the, bit forward. It was much more lateral than the... Yeah, so you hit the ball very thin. Yeah. So a natural swing path for the kicker is actually slightly diagonal into the court like this. Yeah. It's, it's imaging the way that the ball's spinning. So actually, you know what? You're actually imparting a little bit more pace on the ball that way. You're gripping the ball fuller. If you, get, if you hit the ball this way with the racket, it's going to be more power than if you're hitting it this way. This is too thin. Yeah, no yeah so going like this, you're going to get a lot less power. You can do it, but you're going to get a lot less power. And you most likely would have to ball, throw the ball further behind you. Okay, so right? I'm going to toss in a little bit. But you know what I, what's great about this? If you do the things that I told you to do, Yeah naturally the racket's going to go this way it's going to go more the diagonal way well that actually you rotated into that one you took yeah. all the kick out of it that was a more of a flat serve okay so stay sideways stay sideways my friend okay. don't rotate exaggerate this this feeling of sideways more. What I recommend to players is that they stay sideways, like they, that they exaggerate and stay sideways the whole time, just to get used to this feeling. Because what happens in reality is that you're sideways at the moment of contact, and then once the racket starts to drop, the players do open up. And the problem with you is you're opening up too early. Okay. And you're opening up prior to the contact. So here's what I recommend. You just exaggerate the sideways and stay like this the whole time. Look at that. All right, one more thing that you have a tr trouble with and a lot of other players have trouble with uh -huh. is what happens with your, with your left shoulder after the contact. So players will be too upright, okay? okay. So remember, did I ever tell you what the cartwheeling movement is? Shoulder over shoulder, that's why right. you Right, so, so remember when you toss the ball, you continue staying up with the, to with the toss arm. Okay. That puts the non-dominant shoulder above the dominant shoulder. And then when you accelerate upwards, this reverses and now the shoulder goes down. Unfortunately, on the kick serve, a lot of players will stay high with the shoulders because they're not using their body. So they will play like this. They'll toss the ball here and they will not drop the front shoulder because oh. it's not natural. Most of the time when you throw the ball in front on the first serve, naturally this front shoulder drops a little because you're leaning. Okay. So a lot of players are stationary on the kick serve and they will stay high here with this side. Are all serves shoulder over shoulder? Absolutely. And so what happens because the shoulder is higher, you have less room here and it feels more cramped. It feels jammed. So by dropping this shoulder down, you all of a sudden get a lot more range of motion with the right side. You see the difference? Now yeah. I have all this room to swing. And that increases the way you action, like the speed of the racket, right? Absolutely, you get more power that way. So yeah. if, I'm, if I'm upright, if I'm straight up with the shoulder, I got less space here and also my head is in the way. So if I drop here, look, if I drop, all of a sudden I got all this space here to go diagonally across the ball. So what I want you to do is, yeah. you're gonna go, not only stay sideways, but you're also gonna go down with this side a little bit. Down, consciously it. down. So and remember, you, you, you want to bend your torso. It's going to be weird, but you want to bend your torso in a V formation where the upper body is down and the legs are straight. Like this, to create the space in order to do this type of movement. Okay. Okay? So, hold on, like this? There you go, man. But where are you hitting? Are you hitting over the fence? Oh, oh no, here, sorry. 
No, that's not. Why you, you look? You're hitting there. It's hitting here. But the good oh. thing is, you don't have to worry about this. If you do what I told you to do, this will happen naturally. Okay, like that. But go down with that front side. Go down with that front side. Down. There you go. Oh, that much? Yeah. Okay. No, that was not good. Like what was wrong with it? Tell me. It felt more of a flat serve than it was a kick. It was. And also the toss was, was one. right. So what, yeah. remember what we talked about? 11, what happens half. to the racket when the toss is at one? You tell me. What happens to the racket? What happens to the racket head at the moment of contact when the toss is at one oh, o'clock? Oh, I don't get that spin. Why not? Because of the angle of the racket. Absolutely. It's more like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Because here's the crazy thing about the serve. You don't know what the angle of the racket face is. Because that part of the serve is like a couple of minutes seconds. The... You have no clue. Yeah. Right? So this is the fundamentals have to be correct. The toss, the positioning of your shoulders, whether you're rotating into it or not. Because the shoulders are moving a lot slower than the actual racket. So you can control what the shoulders are doing. Okay. Or the torso is doing. Okay. It's hard to manufacture an angle of the racket face at the moment of contact. Yeah. So always when you're examining your serve, the first thing I would always look at is the toss and according to the intention of the serve you had. The second thing I would look at is your intention and whether you had rotated into the serve or not. Yeah. Okay? Those two things. Oh! That was a good one. You like that one? Yeah. All right. On the line. Keep going like this. This is so stupid. I don't know. I don't know. Dude, strings. Oh, okay. I don't. I never. Better. All right. You ready for the slice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna rotate into the slice like you do on your flat serve. Okay. On the toss, you can still be at 12 o'clock. Okay. Because you have an arc on your toss. So for you, there's the most natural ways to get that toss right at 12. And you're gonna hit your flat from there. You're gonna hit your kick from there eventually. And you're gonna hit your slice from there. Okay. Now, what you gotta envision is a scooping action around the ball, and that's gonna create slice. So slice is basically created. If we meet the ball with more of a vertical position of the racket face, and if the racket goes towards the right, we already talked about this, now we get slice. Yeah. So what I want you to envision is this movement right here, scooping action around the ball, and then what I want you to focus on is the actual finish. If you get the finish right, uh -huh. most of the time, the swing path is gonna be right. So what I want you to do at the end is have your hand, your palm of your hand, up towards the sky. Or in other words, the string. So when you come around, I want you to finish like this, and you'll get, you'll get slice, like that. Okay. Just focus on this. A little bit more in front. Okay, now if the ball drifts a little too far to the left and it goes 1130, you're gonna have a hard time with the slice. Yeah. Yeah, because you're gonna rotate into it. What happens to a lot of players, this is true for the flat serve as well. Keep this in mind for the flat serve as well. Okay. If you're doing slice or flat and the ball is at 1130, your body will have to bend this way like this. It's just gonna rotate into the contact. You'll have to bend like this. You'll see a bending of the body like this. It's a super unnatural, super uncomfortable, and yeah. you will lose power because of it. So in order for you to get that straight vertical position of the racket face, the body will have to bend like this. And you don't want this. You want to be a little bit more upright with the body at the moment of contact. Okay. Don't go past 12 on the flat and the slice serve, okay? Oh, yeah. oh I like it. Nice. Yeah. Do one more. Not bad, right? Yeah, that was a slight curvature. Here, one more. Last one. That was a little bit at 11. And what was that? Tell me, what kind of serve was that? Was that slice, was that a kick, was that flat? What was that? Slice? No, kick. It was more kick because that was at 11. Remember, there's going to be an automatic kick if you, if throw, I go at if you throw the ball 11 and behind you. It's going to be almost impossible to, to hit a slice because what happens is as you throw in the ball 11 o'clock and behind you, the racket will be like this in order to catch the ball back here. Yeah, so it's an automatic so it's kick at 11. Automatic kick at 11 and behind. And you can, behind. If it's 11 and in front, you can probably open up and make it like this. But, uh, that was a but kick. if it's behind, that was a kick. Yeah. Accidental kick. Okay. As long as it's in, right? Well, I don't like accidental serves. So, yeah, you, know, so yeah. whatever your intention is, you want to execute the intention. Yeah. So if you're looking for a slice, you end up with a kick. That's not good. Right. Oh. I like that one, actually. Do it again. Oh, ace. Yeah. All right. Oh, nice job, Shamir. If there's anything I learned is definitely how to do the... The racket tap? Yeah. The racket tap doesn't involve the frame. 
Yes. You see, this is a new phenomenon now in tennis. People have to learn to do a racket tap properly. Yeah, but how do you know who's one that's doing that? All right, so the most common mistake I see on the racket tap is players will go like this and they'll tap the racket with the, so this is ridiculous. You will scuff up your racket. In fact, I got a scuff here from someone that did a racket tap with the frame. Probably wasn't me. And I wasn't happy. No, it wasn't you. Okay, okay. So racket tap, one player will open the strings. Yeah, but who's gonna, how do you know which one's Doesn't gonna... matter. So I'll open my strings here, do a tap. And let's do it the reverse way. There you go. Okay, so but one person has Here, to up say... high, up high. Come on, up high, the other way. Okay. There you go, we're yeah, doing yeah, racket taps. To... This is modern tennis yeah, now. Yeah. All right, no more handshakes. There you go. Okay, okay.